My name is Mikhail Parikas, and I lead the research group working on catalysis at the Institute of Chemical Research of Catalonia. I share with many chemists the view that catalytic processes are key for sustainability, since they allow maximizing efficiency in the conversion of starting materials into final products. They allow also minimizing the energy consumption associated to this transformation, and in most cases, they avoid the generation of waste. Catalysis is an ubiquitous phenomenon. It is involved in very simple yet extremely important processes, such as the industrial synthesis of ammonia, and also in the very complex and specific enzyme reactions. In fact, one of the most important lines of progress in catalysis is directed to the development of catalytic species that can respond to external stimuli. And these species are known as smart catalytic systems. And one of the research lines in my group is devoted to the development of such catalytic systems. We have synthesized these kind of molecules that bear an azobenzene and therefore they are capable to isomerize from the E form to the Z form uh, under application of a certain wavelength. They also contain a catalyst part and also another scaffold that only can block the catalyst when being in the, e for, in the Z form. Uh, the aim of this project is to be able to control the activity of this catalyst at will. We perform the reactions that we want to control in NMR tubes because we have a device that allows us to irradiate the sample while registering NMR spectra. This is the monochromator that is the light source and this is the optical fiber that allows us to irradiate directly in the NMR tube. From this computer that is connected to the monochromator, we can choose at which wavelength we want to irradiate the sample. With this setup, we can either study a photostationary state of the photo switch or monitor the reaction in situ. One of the main paradigms in sustainable chemistry is perfectly formulated as the three R principle. Reduce, reuse and recycle. And in catalysis, reduced catalyst loading is, is deeply associated to the design of catalysts with high catalytic activity. And obviously this is something that you can control through catalyst design. Recycling and reuse in turn are associated to the introduction of some handle on the molecules of the catalyst and this handle will allow us immobilize the catalyst on some support and this will facilitate enormously the separation of the catalyst by physical means and then its reutilization. Let's imagine that our catalyst is contained in this tea bag and that when we sink the tea bag in hot water it is provoking a chemical reaction. In this case we can appreciate the reaction through the change of color and then at some point when the reaction is complete we simply pull our catalyst off the water and we can separate our reaction product which will be contained in the cup and we can recover our catalyst. And if T was a real catalyst then we would be able to separate this water containing the product to put new hot water in our cup and by sinking the tea again, repeating the reaction. This perfectly illustrates what a recyclable catalyst is. In real chemistry, the most common methods for immobilization of catalysts are on one hand, a covalent immobilization onto insoluble polymers, and in this case, separation of the catalyst can be achieved by simple filtration and on the other hand immobilization onto magnetic nanoparticles. And in this case the separation is achieved by magnetic decantation by a simple application of a magnet. Magnetic nanoparticles are a versatile material for supporting catalysts because they have intrinsic properties as a large surface area, low toxicity and magnetism. This later 
allow an easy separation of the reaction medium using a external magnetic field. The magnetic nanoparticles can be prepared by a thermal decomposition of a salt percussion and in the presence of surfactants that allow their agglomeration. Once these nanoparticles were prepared, we can functionalize with a variety of organocatalysts and catalysts using click chemistry. These new materials can be applied at different reaction, reactions and the organocatalyst can be recycled and reused because of the magnetic properties of the nanoparticles. In, in the words of Sir John Cornford, the Nobel laureate in chemistry in 1975, the ideal chemical process is something that can be carried out in a disused bathtub by a one-armed man who cannot read, the product being collected continuously through the drain hole in 100% purity and yield. This quotation brings us to one of the key issues in sustainable chemistry and also to one of the main interests of my research group, and this is the development of catalytic flow processes. Let's imagine that the bits contained in this column are made of an immobilized catalyst. And what we aim in a continuous flow process is that simply passing the reactants through this catalyst, the catalysts mediate the chemical process and the starting materials are fully converted into reaction product and that we simply collect the reaction product at the end of the column. Not so dramatic as in the corn form definition, but equally practical. We will perform a manic reaction between propanol and animin under continuous flow operation uh, using a, a polymer supported organocatalyst, uh, and this will allow us to obtain the desired amino aldehyde in excellent years and cellular activities. Flow processes have a number of advantages over batch reactions. On the one hand, it is easier to, to isolate the products. Moreover, the scale-up is greatly simplified by just passing the same regions for extended periods of time. Our goal is to prepare catalytic cartridges so that the user only has to prepare a solution of the regions, pump it through the column, and simply collect the product at the end. We can even monitor the flow process in real time by means of IR spectroscopy. In this case, choice of an appropriate reference peak in the IR spectra has allowed us to optimize the flow rate, thus maximizing the conversion.